All right. Well, good morning and welcome to Martin First Baptist. We're so glad you joined us this morning. I uh, had a very exciting time of life groups this morning, and so we're thankful for that. It's, it's exciting to be back. In your chair this morning, you should have two things, uh, two items in your chair. And so the first thing we want to we talk about um, is Right Now Media. Now, we've had Right Now Media for a while, but we also want to make a push forward today. Many of our life groups are, are using Right Now Media. And so in that card today, all you have to do is text the word MARMADUKE in all caps to the number 49775. And that will ask you to create a login. Now, what Right Now Media is, it's basically like uh, still in the church's Netflix account. Um, is how I described it this morning. And, and so uh, you get access to all these Bible studies. And so if you're able to be a part of a life group, um, we're thankful for that. And if you're not, this is a great tool to use at home for your kids, uh, for your family. It's got everything from finance to, to marriage to relationships. And so uh, we're excited and thankful for that tool. Um, but as Miss Cherie starts to play this morning, the, the second thing that you have in your in your chair is uh, is the Lord's Supper. And so I'll just be honest, this morning's service is going to be completely different. Uh, we're going to do a lot of singing. We're going to do a lot of sharing. Um, but for church on Sunday, we often worry about what we look like. We have to be ready. We have to have, feel like we have our life together when we walk in every Sunday morning. Um, and that's simply not the case. And so as we take uh, the elements this morning, uh, my prayer is that you would just come as you are. Whatever baggage you brought in this morning, whatever you, whatever week you've had, whatever day you've had, whatever morning you've had, I pray that you would just leave that at the feet of Jesus and just and come to him as we worship him this morning. And so that's my prayer. Father God, we thank you for this morning. God, I pray that you would just bless this service. God, I thank you for, for each and every person here this morning. God, we're excited. We're, I've been looking forward to this day all week, God. God, just meet us here, God. Meet the needs in this place. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you would, would you stand this morning? We're going to sing that together. Come out of sadness. Oh, come out of sadness from wherever you've been. Come broken hearted, let rescue be dead. Come find your mercy, oh sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Lay down. So lay down your
There's joy for the morning. Oh, sinner, be still. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can Earth has. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can So lay down your burden. That's our prayer this morning that you come just like you are doesn't matter what kind of week you've had doesn't matter how difficult things have been doesn't matter how easy your week has been I want us to go back in the Bible and listen to the Word of God there's a lady that came to the well and she came in the middle of the day to the well because she was embarrassed and ashamed of herself embarrassed and ashamed of her lifestyle of what had gone on in her life she couldn't help it. It just happened. Those things just kind of happen. Life kind of happens sometimes. She came and she found a fellow sitting there by the well. His name's Jesus. And he came and that day, that woman at the well met the Savior of the world. And he loved her, cared for her just like she was. There's a man that climbed up in a sycamore tree. His name's Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was curious. And he was very curious about who Jesus was. And he wanted to know about Jesus. And his curiosity got the best of him. He climbed up in a sycamore tree to see the Lord. And we find that God used him or took him and received him and stopped at the very place where he was at, looked up in the tree and called him by name and said, Zacchaeus, come down because I'm going to your house today, just like he was. Now, he was a tax collector. Nobody liked Zacchaeus. He was a fellow that was way out of bounds. Nobody cared about him. But Jesus did. And met him right where he was wherever you are today that's why we want you to come this morning you know this morning as we take the Lord's Supper I, 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 I just thought of these people there's a man named Nicodemus a very religious man Nicodemus was uh, uh, came to Jesus by night he kind of came incognito didn't want to talk to Jesus and in, in public because he was a priest and and people would made fun of him and the people would have asked him because they were the Jews were were harassing Jesus so to speak but Jesus came to, uh, Nicodemus came to Jesus, and as he came to Jesus, Jesus looked at him and he said, Nicodemus, you must be born again. You see, folks, you got to come as you are. Nicodemus left there, and Jesus said the most greatest scripture that ever had been given, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There's another young man, he's, uh, we call him the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler came to Jesus and he said, sir, good sir, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Well, he found out that you can't inherit eternal life. And Jesus shared with him, what does the scripture say? So this morning, as we think about what the word of God says, it's not about doing something. It's about trusting someone. Say amen. You see, this morning, God wants to take your mess of your life, of my life, of our lives, and make a message with it you have a story he wants to take our messes and he wants to make messages out of it so that when we go out these doors this afternoon when we leave here after a while that we'll have a message we'll have something to share with those wonderful folks that are out there you see the rich young ruler didn't cut, walk away with jesus he didn't walk away that day because he was so grieved he had so much he kept his possessions he kept his money he kept all the things that, that made him feel good about himself. Listen, I'm going to tell you what. When, if you can lay it down, just like the song said, come as you are. 
You see, that day, he walked away from Jesus unconverted, but he never walked away from him unloved. You are loved today. And I want you to know that. God loves you so very, very much. Come as you are. This morning, as we go before the Lord, as we come before him this morning to receive this juice and this uh, bread, which symbolizes the body of Christ, the broken body of Christ, the blood of Christ. And everybody said, well, Brooke, I'm not a member here. If you're a child of God, we want you to feel welcome. We want you to be a part because in just a moment, we're going to receive these elements and to observe what God has done. But I want you to, first and foremost, I want you to come as you are. If you come like you are, God will take you the way you are and he'll change your life. And can I have an amen? He'll change you because he changed Nicodemus, a religious man. He changed uh, uh, Zacchaeus, a, 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 a very uh, astute man, a, a thief, if you will. He changed a fellow, a, a woman at the well who came and had five husbands. And the man that, that was, she was living with there wasn't her husband at all. And Jesus told her, come as you are, but I'll take you the way you are. He loves you this morning. Bow with me as we pray and we ask God. Father, we ask you to enter into this place. We're grateful today. And Lord, I pray and thank you as we come this morning just like we are with all of our bumps, all of our bruises, Lord, of all of our hurts, all of our habits, and Lord, all of our hang-ups. We come this morning loving you and thanking you for what you're going to do. And we're grateful today. Love our precious folks today. Thank you for the wonderful group of people that you've assembled this morning on this very special day to love one another, to care for one another, and to minister to one another today. Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit would already begin to work in our hearts because there may be someone here like the woman at the well. There may be someone here just like Nicodemus. There may be someone here just like Zacchaeus. There may be someone here just like the rich young ruler who's trusting in things other than you. So I pray this morning that nobody leaves here realizing and can't fathom the fact that God, you love every one of us and you want to work in our lives and through us. In Jesus' wonderful name I pray, amen.
cross, I surrender my life. I'm in all of you. I'm in all of you. When your love ran red and my sin washed white, I owe all to you. I owe all to you, Jesus. At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light, that's where we find forgiveness. That's where we find his mercy. That's where we find his grace. You see, Paul, if you will, chose to tell us about the understanding or the trueness of the cross, about the preaching of the cross. And your Bible's in 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, if you will, turn there, if you will. 1 Corinthians chapter number 1. And we find that the Apostle Paul and the cross, if you will, everybody, is the dividing line of all the ages. You uh, will either accept the blood of Jesus and his broken body, or, and, or that the cross will cause you to reject what Jesus has done for you. He's done it all. He paid it all and all to him I owe. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, the Bible says, For the preaching of the cross is to them which perish foolishness, but to, unto us which are saved it is the power of God. You see, the preaching of the cross of Christ. Folks, if I, there's not a better subject in the whole wide world than to preach than the cross of Calvary because there at the cross Jesus gave his life he gave everything that he could give there wasn't one thing he left on that cross he gave it all because the cross was the place he died there to be your substitute and my substitute look if you will keep reading with me he said for it is written I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and I will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent he said where is the wise where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made the foolish wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them which believe. You see, by the foolishness of preaching, when a man stands and shares with you the good news of Jesus Christ, when he stands and proclaims to you uh, how the, that, that God loves you, he cares for you, he died on the cross for you, he gave his all for you, he did everything just for you this morning. My prayer is that you'll know that it's just not foolish preaching, but it's by the foolishness of preaching that men come to know I'm lost, I need to hear about Jesus, and I put my faith and trust in him. He says, because the foolishness of God is wiser. He said, it's wiser. Paul said in verse 23, he said, but we preach Christ crucified, and unto the Jews a stumbling block, and to the Greeks foolishness. You see, folks, my job is to preach about Jesus, that he died for your sins. He was crucified on a cross. He gave everything to become your substitute and for mine. Look in chapter 2, look at verse number 1. In chapter 2 of 1 Corinthians, verse number 1, the Bible says, And I, brethren, Paul says, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring to you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Jesus was crucified in your place he took your sins he put them on his body and on the tree the cursed tree we find Jesus gave it all he paid it all and all to him I owe you see the Bible speaks how that one would be crucified one man would come to be crucified in the book of Matthew chapter number 20 uh, 27 look verse 35 and 36 in Matthew chapter 27 verse 35 and 36 the Bible tells us these words. He says, Then they crucified him and divided his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Those men looked at Jesus and watched him die. And see, folks, the significance about that moment on the cross is they watched Jesus and they watched him die. They gave his all, or he gave his all for them. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, Romans chapter 5, verse 12, what a tremendous passage of Scripture. He said, therefore, he says, just as one, as though one man's sin entered into the world and death through sin, death was spread to all men because all have sinned. 
And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, it tells us these words. He says, for he made him, that's Jesus, God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us. You see, when he was crucified on that tree, he literally, in those moments, in the middle of the day, when God turned his back, when God forsook his one and only son, when God forsook the one who would take the law and live it to the letter, when God took the one who would give him everything, he, he, he gave so willingly. God took that one man, he who knew no sin, he said, became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. Greatest trade in the world ever. Greatest trade in the world. He took my rags and gave me his righteousness. You see, in John chapter 18, verse 14, the Bible says that it was Caiaphas who advised the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for everyone. One man had to die for every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl. In Luke 23, I want you to listen to the story. In Luke 23, the Bible says these words, They shouted, Crucify Him! Crucify Him! Then they said to them the third time, What evil has He done? What evil has Jesus done? I have found no reason. This is Pilate speaking. I found no reason. And the Bible says, he says, he says, for death, that for no reason for death, he says, I will therefore chastise him and I'm going to let him go. But they ever insisted, demanding the loud voices that he be crucified. And the voices of these men and the chief priests uh, prevailed. So Pilate gave sentence that it should be as he was requested of Jesus. You've got to die. One man would die for everybody. And he released him unto them one that requested him for the rebellion and the murder. His name, Barabbas. Remember that. That's your middle name, Barabbas. You were a murderer. You were a thief. You were a robber. I was a robber. I was a murderer. I was a thief. And God let Barabbas go, and Jesus hung on the tree. He was crucified for the sins of every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl. And the Bible says he'd been thrown into prison. He delivered Jesus to their will. Jesus died. Verse 26, it says, Now, as they led him away, they laid hold of a man named Simon the Cyrenian, who, he said, who was coming from the country, and, and on him that the cross might be. So Simon had the cross placed on him because they had beaten Jesus so bad. They had whipped him so much. And they had placed him in such a position that he was so weak. And they placed that on Simon. Simon walked with Jesus up a place called Golgotha. And as he walked to Golgotha, the Bible says, and a great multitude of people followed. And the women, the Bible says, also mourned him. The Bible says, he said, and a great multitude of people, he said, and they lamented him. That means they were broken over him. And they reached out to Jesus and they cried and they wept. Remember, only a few days earlier, they had cried, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But one man had to die. One man had to be crucified. One man had to take your place. One man, his name is Jesus. One man. One man gave his all. The Bible says in verse number 28, he says, but Jesus turning to them said, daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me. He said, but weep for yourselves and for your children. Jesus was looking ahead. You see, folks, it, it breaks my heart to think what our, my grandkids, your grandkids, our children are going to have to endure in the days to come. Jesus was praying for all those children, for all those grandkids, for everybody who would ever be born. He said, the Bible says, blessed are the days are coming which will say, blessed are the barren wombs which never bore and breast which never nursed before. The Bible says in verse 30, he says these words. share with us verse number 30 says then they will begin to say to the mountains fall on us into the hills cover us for it would do these things in the drink in the green what will it happen to the dry there also will two other criminals led with him to be put to death and when they come to the place called Calvary they crucified him the man on the left was the cross of rejection if you're here this morning and you know not Christ, you're on that cross. That's your cross. The cross of rejection. You say, I don't need you, Jesus. 
you reject him. If you're the man on the right, you're the cross of reception. You say, today, Lord, would you uh, remember me? But the man in the middle is the man who paid it all. The man in the middle. Do you know the man in the middle? I love that man in the middle because he first loved me. Oh 
we hold here in the power of Christ I'll stand here in the power of Christ we stand the Bible says in the gospel he speaks to us in Christ alone there's no other way there's no other name the Bible says to us in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 9 and 10 it says for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus and two good works if you're saved this morning you're saved by grace alone through faith alone in Christ alone say amen church this morning maybe you're not well let me share with you in the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 10 the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 4 verse 10 that there's not another name the Bible says let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom you crucified he said uh, whom God raised from the dead by him this man stands here he's talking about the impotent man of chapter 3 the man who couldn't walk the man who, who Paul and uh, uh, who, who, who the men of God stood by and, and picked Peter picked his arm up and, and something happened miraculously, never walked before, and he was healed miraculously. And the Bible said, This man stands here whole before you. This is the stone, talking about Jesus. He says, This is the stone which was rejected by the builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other. For there's not another name under heaven, given under heaven, he says, which we must be saved. That name, Jesus. There's not another name. You see, there's not another name and there's not another way. Jesus was going to leave his disciples before the crucifixion, before it all happened. In John chapter 14, the Bible says these words, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. For in my Father's house are many mansions, if it were not so, I would have told you. And if I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. He said, and where I go, you know, and the way you know. And the Bible says, uh, oh, Thomas, he got so excited. He said, Lord, we don't know the way, how, where you're going, and how we can get there. Folks, the only way you can get to heaven from Marmaduke, Arkansas, John 14, 6. Jesus said, I am the way the truth and the life no man comes to the father except by me do you know Jesus do you know him it's because he lives you can go to heaven let's sing that everybody God sent his son they called him Jesus he came to love Uncertain. 
shares with us about the gospel my concern this morning is for anybody who might be here that doesn't have a personal relationship with Jesus my concern here this morning is for you who have maybe have religion but you don't have a relationship the greatest thing that could ever happen to you would today you and the Lord begin a great relationship it's the best thing that ever happened to all of us in here can I have an amen if you're saved this morning, the best thing ever happened to me. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 and 4, the Apostle Paul gives us the gospel. He said that I deliver to you, first of all, that which I also receive. So I can't give you something unless I've already got it. So I've given it. Paul said, I've got it. I want you to have it. So I've got it. I want you to have it if you don't have it. He says that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scripture, and that he was buried. And on the third day, he rose again, according to the Scriptures. You see, it's not Marmaduke First Baptist Church way. That's the Bible way. Can I have an amen? That's the Bible way. That's what the Bible says. And that's what we believe today. We believe it's the Bible. You see, and my question is this. In the Bible, uh, Jesus had told a story in the book of John. In the book of John, chapter 11, his story goes like this. He had a good friend. His name was Lazarus. And his good friend Lazarus had died. And Lazarus was broken. He passed away. And four days later, after Jesus got word, Jesus shows up at the cemetery. Four days late. Martha came out to meet with Jesus and said, Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. What's up with that? Have you ever felt like you've been let down? I'd say they're, I mean, they, they had Jesus in their home all the time. They visited with one another. They, they ate meal after meal together. They loved one another. But Jesus always has a plan, y'all. It's not a backup plan. It's his plan. Say amen. It's his plan. Jesus said to Martha, Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever, the Bible says, whosoever liveth and believes in me, shall never die and here's the question that i ask you do you believe this most important question do you believe this you see this morning that's my prayer that you know jesus and this morning in the moments that we've sang that we've read scripture we pointed people to Jesus. We talked about the crucifixion. My reason for pointing that to you is if there's somebody here that doesn't know Jesus, I want you to be saved. I want to give you that opportunity to be saved. I want to give you that chance. Miss Frieda says every week, I was in revival this week at Lake Street. And every night she'd send me a text just before I'd preach. And she said, Brother Kim, I'm praying for the lost. She's still praying for the lost. 
If you're here this morning and you're lost and you've never had Jesus as your personal Savior, that's today, right now, you can do that. Today, the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be, what, sir? Church, say it. Saved. You can be saved. But also here, if we're Christians, I heard a message on forgiveness on Thursday. It really touched my heart. God spoke to my heart. Jesus has used the story and, and shared the story about how that if, if you have something against a brother, before you put your offering in, before you come before him, you need to put it down and go to that person and say, I'm sorry. You know, folks, in our churches today, we harbor so much resentment and so much bitterness and so much grief. My prayer is this morning, if that's you, you'll be big enough to say, I'm sorry. If I've offended you, I want to be big enough to say, I'm sorry. I apologize to you. Folks, there isn't anything any more important than today that we become one in Christ. That we become unified in the body of Christ. As we are here about to receive this wonderful, wonderful opportunity to point the world that we know Jesus and we know his love and we've been forgiven. We must forgive others. As much as you have been forgiven, you need to forgive today. As you bow your head and close your eyes, would you do that please? My prayer is right now. Lord Jesus, as we search our own hearts today, and I search my heart, I pray, Father, that as you turn that great big old light on that will illumine all the ugly in my life, I pray I'd be honest and confess that. Lord, as I look out over the group of people that you've assembled here today from all walks of life, from all parts of, the, of our world, from all places in our community and, and from surrounding areas that you've brought here today, it's no mistake. We want to sing of your mercy, of your goodness. I can't thank you enough for forgiving a boy like me who is guilty, guilty, guilty. Because all my life you've been faithful. All my life, Lord, you've been so, so, so good. So if there's sin in your life this morning, confess it, forsake it right there. Altar's open. You can come to the altar. We'd love for you to. It's open. If you need to be saved this morning or during this next song, I'd love for you to come and say, Brother Kim, I want Jesus in my heart. Because we're going to stand and sing this next song. So when we stand and begin to sing, you just come in one motion and meet me. Find a place in the altar. Go to someone that you need to say I'm sorry to. And this morning, let's just worship him before we take this. Would you stand? Oh, your mercy never fails me. How about you this morning? Listen. All my days. All my days. Oh, I can't get over this. In your hand. He's held me here. From the moment that I wake up. Till I lay my head up, oh, I will sing of the goodness of the goodness of God. All my life, church. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. The goodness of God. All my life. I love your voice. Oh Lord, I love you. Tell him that. You He's have led me through the fire. He brought you through those hard times. In darkest night. The darkest night you of your life. Close like no other. Oh, and right here. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I've lived it. Glory to God. The goodness, the goodness of God. All my life you've been faithful, Lord. Sing it, church. So all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. I will oh, sing. I will 
sing your goodness this morning, church. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. I'll sing that again this morning. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, surrendered now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after All my life you have been faithful. All my life. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Sing that one more time this morning. All Just your life, voices. Sir, sing it. All my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath, with every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing. Of the goodness of God. Would you just bow your heads while you stand there? As they play just a moment, our job is to look within and say, Lord, is there something in my life that shouldn't be there? Is there something here that I don't need in my life right now? If there is, confess it and forsake it. It's that simple. Christian, it's as easy as it is. There's nobody in this room, Lily White. There's nobody in this room that's got it all together. We're all just a bunch of failures trying to learn how to do it right. We're all in here struggling, hurting, but knowing that when I put my trust in Him, He's got it because He's got it all together. So look within. We're going to look back here in just a moment. And we're going to think about that fateful night when Jesus gave his all. And what he did. As he washed those men's feet who would soon all run away from him. He loved them to the very end. And he would go to the cross. And he would hang there on your place as your substitute. So just take this moment to say, Lord Jesus, I need you. I need you. And I love you. I appreciate, Father, what you've done. We bless you tonight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. The Lord's Supper, folks, represents the atonement of Christ as our only means of justification. He's not a way. He's the only way. There's not another way to get to heaven. I told you there's not another name. There's not another way to get there. There's only one. It's a one-way exclusive trip through Jesus and Jesus alone. And my prayer is, is this morning as you take the cup that you've given before you, kind of peel off that first part if you can. And I know it's a chore sometimes <laughs> to get that rascal off. But understand this. Listen to what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. The Apostle Paul writes these words and he says, For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night which he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Gene, would you stand and pray this morning and ask God to bless this very special bread that represents the broken body of Jesus Christ. Gene.
Take, eat. This is my body, which has been given and broken for you. The scripture tells us, this is after the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, this cup is a new testament in my blood. This do you as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Mark Thomas, would you stand and pray and ask God to bless this cup that God has given on our behalf, please? This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink, as you drink it in remembrance of me. My prayer as you receive that is this memorial time. We're to do this in remembrance of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You see, folks, this morning, with all of our heart, we want to sing this last song, The Goodness of God. We want to thank God for His blessings on our lives and what he's done there's one more scripture i want to share with you romans chapter 5 verse 8 i can't share it enough i think it's one of the most greatest scriptures that's ever been given the bible says in romans chapter 5 verse 8 and he speaks to us he said but god demonstrates his love toward us and that while we were still sinners christ died in our place he took your place he loves you that much we ought to give our lives everything that we are yesterday at our house we had two of our oldest grandsons were there Atlanta had on a shirt and it said here am I send me we're fixing to send you out here in just a moment my prayer is that you would go forth and let everybody know Jesus is the way he's the only way Jesus is the truth he's the only truth and Jesus is the life he's the only life there's no other way there's no other way to get there. Let's sing, Cole. Justin, as we sing this, this be your anthem this week. Kind of our excitement as we leave this morning. I've been held. I've been held by the Savior. I fell far from above. I ain't the same, the prodigal return. Oh, my hope is in Jesus. Thank God my yesterday's gone. Oh, my sins are forgiven. I've been washed by. Shackles and chains. I've been freed and forgiven. Yes, Lord. I'm not going back. I'll never be the same. It's my singing home. a man who breaks him down to his knees Come on, brother. Take it out. God I've been broken more than a time or two yes Lord but he picked me up and he showed me to be a man that's why I was singing all my hope is in Jesus Oh, 
raise the voice and sing this morning. Oh, my hope is in Jesus. Thank God my yesterday is gone. Oh, my sins are forgiven. I good. God is so good to us. Thank you so much for being here today as we observe this wonderful uh, opportunity called the Lord's Supper. And we do this in remembrance of Him. And as often as we do it, we do it for Him. We do it because of Him and because of what He's done. My prayer is that today, if you need something, we'll be right here. I'll hang out here at my table. Love to talk with you, visit with you, chat with you. Anything else, Cole? Yeah, y'all go ahead and have a seat real fast because uh, I'm going to be quick, but Josh wants to talk, so I don't know how long that'll go. Um, <laughs> short, all right. Uh, but hey, this week, we got a, a good schedule ahead of us this week. Uh, midweek morning, man, at 11 o'clock. If you can come be a part of that on Wednesday morning, come be a part of that. That will air on Facebook um, at 6.30 that night. Children and youth uh, have activities going on from 6 to 7.30 on Wednesday night. And then uh, there's uh, some life groups that are going on uh, from 6.30 to 7.30. We started life groups today. Um, it was exciting to be back. It was exciting to go to Harvest and go pick up donuts. Um, it's even better that my truck smells like donuts now. Um, but it was exciting to kind of do some, some normal, normal things this morning. And so if you have not been a part of a live group this morning, you missed out, you got here late, that's fine. Um, they're on our website. We'll continue to post those. But come be a part of those. We encourage you to do that. Um, next Friday is our uh, guys' night at the ballpark. So today is the last day to sign up. If you want to go to the Memphis Redbirds game with us next Friday, uh, sign up in the back. Cost is $15, and we're going to take a couple of vans. And so we're going to leave here at Friday at 5 o'clock. So be sure to sign up for that. Uh, today is the last day to sign up for Lottie? Dixie. Dixie. I went the whole month and got it right, but the last Sunday gets me wrong. Um, weather's got me ready for December. But uh, Dixie Jackson for State Missions. Um, today's the last day to give for that, and so if you've got a little something you want to give, put it in the silver bucket in the back. Um, we're excited about that. Uh, we will start talking in a few weeks about Operation Christmas Child. Uh, we're gearing up, very excited about that. And then two big events that we'll talk more about next week, but you can go ahead and mark on your calendar. October 30th from 3 to 6, that's a Saturday, we're going to have our fall festival. Um, we are planning right now on it being in the park. Uh, we're going to make it community-wide, but that's going to be Saturday, October 30th um, from 3 to 6 o'clock. So if you want to help out and be a part of that, we'd love to have you. Invite somebody. It's going to be exciting. Uh, we've got our inflatables already uh, ordered. They're going to come in. They're going to set them up for us. So we're looking for a really great time that Saturday. And then the next day, October 31st, which is technically Halloween, uh, we're going to have a wild game supper. And so uh, David McFerrin is going to come preach. Um, he's a pastor down in central Arkansas. He's going to come preach and share this with us that morning, um, or that evening, excuse me. Uh, but those are two big events that we got going on. So, Josh, I'm going to hand it over to you. Say what you need to say. Oh. That's right. Citywide yard sale this Friday and Saturday. Ms. Frida has worked tirelessly over there getting it straightened out. Um, and the best thing about it is the youth are going to be running it. Um, so all proceeds that we get from the citywide yard sale are going to go straight to the youth. That is Friday and Saturday. I'm done now. And it's a nice segue into the youth. So the youth, we have discipleship now coming up. You hear about D now. We've talked about it the last month. Uh, it's coming up October 8th, 9th, and 10th. I have about 40 kids signed up for this weekend. Trouble is I've got five of them paid for. It's 25 bucks. Pays for a t-shirt, pays for the book, pays for their food. We keep them the 8th, 9th, and 10th. They're overnight with us for two nights and three days. And so uh, it ends Sunday morning after service. Uh, Kobe Boyd will be coming in. He'll be preaching that Sunday morning, preaching that weekend to our kids. And uh, the youth band will be leading us again. So if you want to mark on your envelope, mark on your, when you give online, whatever you do, it's 25 bucks. Sponsor a kid. I mean, this makes a big difference. Our youth is growing. It's blowing up since school started back. We've grown by about 10% almost weekly to where we've come from like 20, 25 to we got 40 kids and all of them are signed up for D now on Wednesday nights. So uh, support our kids, support our community. We've got the, the yard sale coming up. Um, all those proceeds go to the youth. That'll be spent on the youth and we'll, uh, figure out how to get all this paid for. But as Kim says before, we've got the money, it's in your pocket. And 
So make a difference. It makes a difference to a kid. I was a kid that grew up with D now, church camps. Um, it makes a difference. There are students in here that are in college that it made a difference to. And so um, pray about that. Um, be giving. Sign-ups, since I'm on that subject, I have the sign-up sheet here with me. If you're a 7th through 12th grade student, you ain't signed up yet, you want to go, you want to be a part of it, um, please come sign up. And um, if you're a parent and you want to get rid of your kid for the weekend and let them hear about Jesus, come see me, sign them up. I'll be right up here after service. Uh, the deadline to sign up and to pay is Wednesday night. Wednesday night, me and Cole are going to sit down. We're going to order all this stuff. Um, so if you're not signed up, please do that. If you'd like to sponsor a kid, please do that. If you're a host home, um, I do need to get with y'all in the next few weeks. Those of you who've told me that you would open your homes up to our students, um, thank you for that, and we'll be having a, a further meeting about that. Back to you. Thank you. All right. Hey, two things I forgot. We are doing a Wednesday night meal this week. It'll be Salisbury steak, um, macaroni, cheese, green beans, uh, mixed fruit. And then also, as I was watching the screens go by, um, there's a uh, commit. It says commit on there. Um, it talks about the uh, Green County Baptist uh, annual meeting, meeting and celebration meeting. Um, basically, that's our yearly meeting that we have as an association. And so we are going to go on that. It's a Sunday night, October 10th. Um, it's just it's a really neat event and we're changing it up this year uh, have a meal at five and then we're going to have a service at six and basically it just talks about uh what we've done as an association over the past year what we've done state wise uh what we've done with acts 18 ministry days and so if you're interested in going to that um brother ken is going to be preaching that night is that right that's right so he'll be preaching that night and so uh just another great opportunity to get plugged in um i think that's it man all right it's been a great day thank you so much for being here i do hope that if any of you would like to be a part of that that's kind of it we've had messengers before i need 10 folks for sure to go i don't care how old you are don't care how young you are i'd just love for you to go to be a part of that everybody's invited to be at lake street uh, as i said i preached revival there this week we had a great great week there but thank you so much for being here today we love you guys we appreciate you and we're looking forward to seeing what god's going to do in our life i was excited this morning uh cole i don't know how many y'all had upstairs but I've counted over 70 that was in uh, uh, our, our first life groups today. So that was exciting. And we appreciate you being here at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning. Thank you for coming. Don't forget your offering goes in the bucket. Man, I see back there, there's a young man back there that is, I'm so glad to have this morning. Brother, thank you for being here this morning. We love you guys. We appreciate your family. John, it's good to have the Millers here with us this morning. Bryson, we love you, buddy. Be sure to go by there and tell them how much you love them and appreciate them. They're pretty special folks and they have gone through some uh, tough times. You know what, that boy right back there, he's going to make it. He's going to make it. I know he is, and I'm proud of him, and I'm so thankful this morning for the Millers. We love them and appreciate Love you guys. Appreciate you all so much being here today. Don't forget your offering. Let's all stand. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, what a wonderful day it's been in your house today to worship you and to come before you in your presence. Lord, thank you. I have sensed your presence here, and I'm so thankful for every family that's gathered here. Lord, what a joy it is. All the things that's going on lord help us as a church to reach out to a lost and dying world lord help us to go forth and and be sent by you to share the good news of jesus christ we love you we thank you if it's in jesus name we pray and all god people said Amen. thank you so much guys good to have you today